Hi, this is Gary Shoup. Um, with this presentation, I'm going to be discussing how to design a continuous flow intersection. Um, this is part one of a two-part series on it. I'm assuming that uh, you have some knowledge on uh, how a continuous flow intersection works uh, if you came across this video. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on what they are, uh, but I will reference some sites that you, you could look at to get more knowledge on them. Um, a continuous flow intersection, it's, it's when the left turn movement's current advance uh, of the main CFI traffic signal uh, at advanced traffic signals placed approximately 300 to 400 feet upstream of the intersection. Um, I'm showing in figure one uh, below this text um, the advanced traffic signal shown with the red dot and the main CFI traffic signal shown with the white dot and the hatching. And what one's doing is uh, they're trying to uh, reduce the number of phases at the center uh, traffic signal, which I'll demonstrate with the slide in the, in following this. And we're just trying to reduce the delay time uh, by using the continuous flow intersection. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration defines this type of intersection as a displaced left turn intersection. Um, throughout this presentation, I will be referring to them as a CFIs. Uh, seems to be the more popular train name that's being used around the country. Um, CFIs can be constructed as a, a one-legged CFI, uh, a two-legged CFI, which is what figure one's showing to your left, and um, a four-legged CFI also. Uh, this figure was taken from a, a Federal Highway publication that's referenced below, uh, which is an excellent source on that material. Um, with this slide, uh, I'm trying to give you an example of how we can uh, eliminate a phase with a two-legged CFI and uh, reduce the overall delay. So here with a phase three and phase seven shown at the top uh, intersection layout. What the CFI is basically doing is uh, th they're taking the left turns away from the center traffic signal and uh, moving the phases um, and combining them with uh, the three phases on those approach here being phases four and eight. So uh, as you can see with the animation below, um, we're able to uh, eliminate one of the phases at, at the center traffic signal and thus re reduce the overall delay time. So uh, uh, hopefully this slide helped you out just to visualize what uh, a CFI uh, accomplishes. Now with this slide, uh, I'm showing an example of a four-legged CFI traffic signal. Uh, I'm not aware of any um, that have been constructed in the United States. It, it's my understanding that some have been constructed in Mexico. Um, I've not come across any on the internet. If anyone is familiar with a four-legged CFI, uh, if you could email me, that'd be great. Uh, I'd love to be able to look at it uh, in Google Maps and, and Street View just to get an idea of how it looks. Um, here I'm showing the, set <coughs> the center CFI traffic signal in, in blue and the advanced CFI traffic signals in red. Mm -hmm. uh, here they're showing a spacing of 325 feet and uh, giving some recommended dimensions for a CFI. Um, I'm not aware of how they came up with these dimensions, and this is going to be discussed elsewhere in the presentation. Um, but it seems to me this has been pretty much adopted, and I've seen it referred elsewhere uh, through publications on them. Mm. Some great web sources for CFIs. Um, you have the FHWA report that I, I referred to earlier. Uh, there's a link to it at the, the top of the slide. Uh, uh, Utah's Department of Transportation has prepared an excellent video. Uh, that you can see on YouTube, how to navigate UDOT's new continuous flow intersection. Um, uh, th there's an overall plan document that was actually created by um, the same consultants who did the design of, of, of UDOT's first CFI. Uh, that's in the third link there, and that was by Fifth Avenue. And um, consultants down Louisiana, ABMB, um, you can find some continuous flow, inf 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 continuous flow intersection information out there, that slide also. Mm. Uh, here's a reference of uh, the existing and planned CFIs in the USA as of mid-March this year. Um, you can see there's 10 being shown. Um, this was taken off Wikipedia. Um, I'm highlighting the one, uh, number seven, the one in Miami Township, Ohio, uh, because that's the one I've been involved with personally. Uh, construction is occurring right now, and uh, it's scheduled to open up in uh, June of this year. Uh, I'm hoping to actually have video uh, of the turn on uh, to see how cars are operating. And, and later on, um, actually, uh, as traffic is built up, it, it's near a new interchange that's being constructed. And uh, they're planning to turn on the CFI before the interchange is opened up. So uh, I'm hoping to create some uh, additional interesting videos on CFIs. 
So uh, what are the design steps for continuous flow intersections? Uh, I've looked for them throughout the, the internet and I haven't been able to find anything and that's the reason why I'm, I'm coming up with these YouTube presentations on them. But uh, the previous literature and presentations have focused on the functionality of CF CFIs and not the design parameters. Um, this is presentation is going to focus on uh, the design parameters. So I'm going to show how to prepare and calculate traffic signal timings for a two-legged CFI. Um, stress the connection between CFI geometry and traffic signal timings, and uh, also how to go about selecting traffic controller phasing software and hardware. Here I'm showing a, a series of design steps that I think one should follow with a continuous flow intersection operation. Um, the following slides will go into each step in more detail. Um, I'm hoping in the next few weeks I'll have a, an interactive uh, spreadsheet through Google Docs that will summarize these steps and which one will be able to enter design parameters and give you suggested uh, lengths um, for the CFI. Uh, step one, select approaches for the CFI traffic signals. Um, items that should be evaluated when looking at which approaches to select. Uh, what's the impact on existing and future access access points to the roadway. Um, there are a lot of islands constructed on the CFI approaches and uh, that's something that should be taken into account. Um, impact on right-of-way acquisition. Uh, as with any uh, capital improvement project, it's always a major item. Uh, impact on existing utilities. Um, it's going to cost a lot more from a utility relocation standpoint if you put it on one approach versus the other. And I'm also going to discuss queue storage concerns um, with existing or future traffic signals. Um, if you anticipate certain traffic signals going in um, due to future development, uh, you, you may want to factor that into your decision. Um, one of the things that we're encountering right now with the continuous flow intersection that's scheduled to go in in Miami Township is uh, fitting a traffic signal in uh, very close to one of the advanced traffic signals for the CFI. Um, for this presentation, I, I'm only going to be discussing uh, two-legged CFIs, and uh, I'm going to be saying that the east-west legs were selected for the CFI. Mm. Step two, uh, calculate the minimum cycle lengths are required to satisfy the AM and PM design hours at the center CFI traffic signal. Um, one needs this step in order to calculate uh, the number of non-CFI lanes required. Okay, so you start at the, the, at the main CFI and, and, and go through a uh, highway capacity uh, software calculations or a similar program um, to see what, uh, how many lanes you need with omitting the left turn lanes selected for the CFI approaches. So you, you want to make sure that the, the cycle length is going to work for the, the through traffic and, and, and the non-CFI left turn traffic um, before you start uh, moving forward and uh, this is a step that I think consultants may overlook sometimes uh, and it's a case where they're just diving into the CFI and, and, and playing around maybe with some VISM animations trying to come up with a cycle length but uh, when you when you think about it when you, when you go about designing uh, any intersection you, you need to know how many lanes you're going to need from a capacity standpoint first. Um, for this particular example um, I'm going to discuss how an AM design hour cycle length of 90 seconds was selected and a, a PM design hour cycle length of 80 seconds was selected and uh, we're going to go with the higher of the design hour cycles using 90 seconds. Um, the reason why we're going with the higher is because this cycle length is going to directly impact uh, the lengths between the advanced CFI traffic signals and, and the main CFI traffic signal. Um, I'm not going to go into discussion about uh, off-peak periods here. Uh, I think there are ways to optimize it and, and go with a free operation or a significant lower cycle length. Um, but I'm going to focus on the design parameters and how you come up with the, the distances between the traffic signals. Uh, this concludes part one of the CFI have to video. Uh, please see part two elsewhere on youtube.com. Thank you.